I feel like relationships aren't really the major, major theme here for this month. I feel like it's going to be on the periphery and it might not even be, you know, incredibly important. So let's just see what's in store for you guys. Okay, so we've got a water sign that's um, also present in the picture here. Okay, so first off, we've got a situation where you're dealing with somebody who is very, very uncertain and unclear about their objectives and about you, okay? We have here the Page of Pentacles. This is you wanting to kind of like reach out to a person, uh, asking them, do you want to meet for coffee? Do you want to meet on uh, for a date? Because this is in, in, in general, like messages about something concrete dates dinners and things like that okay so i feel like you're reaching out to a person and they're kind of like keeping a distance they're keeping their they're keeping you kind of like at arm's length and i feel like this person might have had some trust issues concerning you or they're at a point where they might be a little bit upset with you so you're reaching out but they're not really responding okay um, for some of you, this is a person that you've been like an ex, you've been dealing with them and they, they were trying to figure out what you were up to and they were trying to figure out if you are 100% sincere and honest with them. And I feel like they might have gotten some type of validation that you were not or you were, you know, with somebody else. And so there is like some clear stoppage refusal to communicate here. And I'm also sensing if you've had a lot of strife with them, in the past, I feel that the strife and the communication is at a standstill right now. So things are kind of like, you're not arguing anymore. It's like you're not arguing anymore, but they're not really giving you the time of day. They're not engaging you in communication anymore. And it's almost like they're, they could be blocking you. They could be refusing to communicate with you or they're refusing to listen to what you have to say. Okay, so my advice for you here, uh, Capricorns, and you know, obviously this is not going to apply to everybody, right? But I feel like they're a little bit upset with you. And I feel like you're trying to get them to communicate with you. You're trying to get them to come back. But rather than, than saying sorry or admitting fault, I feel like you still have a lot of pride, okay? You're refusing to let this per person go. But at the same time, it feels as if you might not love them. You might want to have them as a possession. You might want to be with them because you're possessive that if you don't have them, somebody else will scoop them up and then so, they'll be with somebody else. And so being a little bit more mindful about, you know, do I really love that person or do I just not want anybody else to have them? Because there's this sense of possessiveness, control, uh, like, being controlling, being possessive, not wanting the other person to have, you know, to be able to move on, not wanting the other person to um, be in another relationship or be happy. So I feel like there are a lot of things here that signal signifies to me that you have to be the bigger person. And if they're not engaging with you, I feel like, you know, saying you're sorry, admitting faults is it's like a really good step, first step. And even if you feel, I, I, I'm just sensing like you're trying to engage with them, but they're very mad. And it's like you're trying to change the topic. You're trying to communicate with them. But rather than talking about whatever it is that they're mad about, you're trying to change the topic. You're trying to appease them. So you can also have somebody in your midst who's a little bit, I want to say, they're a little bit unpredictable and they're a little bit grouchy. And every time you're dealing with them, it feels like you're walking on eggshells and it can feel very tiring. It can feel really, um, I, w I would say annoying, but I, I don't feel like you would describe it using that word. It just feels to me like it's unsettling for you. You're dealing with somebody who's a little bit moody, cranky, and I'm seeing that with this moon here. 
the moon is very changeable. So one person, uh, the person can be, you know, really happy one moment and like really grouchy the next. So I feel like you're not really sure why are they acting like this? Why are they so changeable? Why are they so inconsistent? And in a way, you know, if you're dealing with something that's very unpredictable, it kind of pulls you in. But then over time, it can feel like, why am I constantly having to do damage control in this relationship? So for that cluster, that's what I feel you're dealing with. There's a definite shift here when we get to the last six cards. And what we have here is you no longer questioning, no longer walking on eggshells, no longer trying to reach out to somebody who's not reciprocating your gestures. Okay, This is a card about moving away from a troublesome situation, a troublesome relationship, moving away from a person that is like this very grouchy as well or dealing with situation where someone has really blocked you you don't really have a choice here because they are putting their foot down they're not hearing it and they're keeping you at arm's length for others of you i feel like this person is moving away from you okay they're sailing on and i feel like just rest assured this is what i usually think of somebody that who's a refugee they left a situation because it was unbearable. They did. They they would have stayed if there was like um, hope. If there was any type of a probability that it could work out, they left because they had to. Because it was like the last absolute last resort. And even though they're moving ahead into the unknown, there's still a little bit of regret. There's still a little bit of like, am I doing the right thing? associated with it. So this process of walking away was not, you know, a walk in the park. It was a very, very difficult choice for the other person, but they had to do it mainly because they felt like you weren't putting in the work. Okay. This is like working diligently to build a relationship in the reverse position. It's almost like I, I can't do it anymore. One person is putting all in all the effort and the other person is very distracted with other things. And so it's not an, uh, an equal contribution when it comes to, you know, who's putting in the work, who's building the relationship and who's reaping the benefits of it. I'm also sensing if you are the one walking away, it's because the other person is not responding. So there, it's like there, there isn't any way for you to get in contact with them. So physically, you have to move on, even though emotionally, you're still very stuck in it. And I do see some regrets here, Capricorns, about did I do the right thing? You know, should I have, um, should I have been more, should I have persevered in the relationship? So I, I do sense there's a little bit of regrets here. Okay, uh, moving forward as well there is a major walking away a theme of walking away separation physically being separated from somebody and i'm also sensing as well you know hoping that you can go back to the situation hoping that you can appease the other person hoping things will be okay so i feel like there's this pain here and this anxiety and this separation that you're not 100 percent over with and rather than dealing with it, I feel like you're stuck in this state where you're still clinging on to your pride. You're still clinging on to the fact that like, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. And the, the point is, the point is, you know, it always takes two people to contribute to the breakdown in a relationship or a breakdown in a situation. So if we were to say, I didn't do anything wrong, it's not a realistic or a truthful or an accurate assessment of what exactly happened. So I feel like while you're doing this, you have been pushed out of a situation or somebody walked away from you. And you're still telling yourself this, you know, same story. I didn't do anything wrong. It's the other person that is at fault. You're trying to move on. You're trying to make offers to other people, date other people, putting yourself out there, um, reinventing your social life. But this pain is still not dealt with. So I feel like you're trying to rush the healing process, but you haven't really worked through exactly what happened. And when we go through, you know, one relationship to the next, we have to have that period of resting 
where we can figure out what did I do wrong in that relationship? How did I contribute to it? What did the other person do wrong as well? Because it always takes two parties. And what do I need to learn from it so that I can become a better partner in the future? And I feel like that process hasn't been done here. I feel like it just, it was never worked on. It was never um, kind of like disseminated to figure out what exactly went wrong. And so you're lacking in the insights and the guidance and the expertise to know what you did wrong, to know exactly what happened so that you don't make the same mistakes. So I do feel patterns here, same mistakes being repeated. Okay, I'm seeing that. I'm also seeing for many of you, um, if you have children with another person and the pages usually indicate, you know, younger people, especially children, um, children needing a lot more time from you. This is kind of like the, the cry for attention. This is somebody who's very attention seeking. They're very sweet, but when they don't, um, when they don't have the positive attention from the adults, they can be a little bit crabby, a little bit grouchy. Okay. And then this is also another child that can be um, underperforming in school. They're not learning something. They're not able to get something. And they tend to get a little bit defensive when, you know, teachers complain about them. So while this is a love reading, I feel like there is a big element here about relationships being affected by children. It could be the parenting techniques. It could be like the ways in which you, the ways in which you, co-parent as well for those who are still dealing with exes and you share children together. So I'm sensing like there might be arguments regarding, you know, child rearing. If you are dealing as well with a Virgo, so this is the card of Virgo, okay, the hermit. When it shows up in the reverse, it's almost like this person um, has a lot of wisdom, has a lot of insights, but they're not operating at their best this month. They might be uh, resorting to some type of snooping, some type of um, uh, spying, some type of like, where have you been? Like, you know, interrogation. It's like, where have you been? What have you been up to? Where did you go? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you let me know, you know, you're going to be home late? So I feel like there's this defensiveness right here. And you're kind of figuring out, you're trying to figure out like, why are they like this? They weren't like this in the past. So I see you doing a lot of appeasing the other person. And I feel like it's starting to get a little bit exhausting. And honestly, this is a really busy month for you. And so relationship problems, especially the little silly problems that creep up in relationships, it just feels to me like you don't really have time for it. You don't really have time for the BS because work is going to be so busy. And so if your partner is behaving in a way where they're doing like a lot of attention seeking, it's really going to annoy you. Okay. And when it annoys you, I feel that you really need to set the record straight. You really need to say like, you know, this isn't a, a good conversation for me to have right now. I've had a really bad day. Let's resume this conversation tomorrow or, you know, over the weekend. Because I feel like it's going to be an ongoing thing where if you, you know, if you don't respond in the way that they want, they will bombard you with another bout of it, like within the next few hours. And then you're going to be very frustrated and you might lash out. So the point here is, yes, be very patient. But I also feel like you need to draw very clear boundaries with somebody who's, you know, doing a lot of attention seeking. For those of you if you're reaching out to another person from your past, I feel like they've moved on, okay? And especially if it's somebody that um, had a lot of suspicions about you, are you faithful to me? Where have you been? And if they tend to be a little bit more on the moodier side, like very somber, uh, emotionally very up and down, I feel like they've moved on. They, they've moved on from it. Let them go, leave them alone because it seems like they need it to move on, okay? So I hope the reading has been helpful for you guys, uh, Capricorn. I feel like for singles, you're not in a position to date. I feel like you might have just gotten out of a relationship and you're still at a point where you're a little bit defensive, okay? So I feel like it's not a, a good energy here to attract good dating partners. And also the people that are coming in, their energy is very young 
very young and not really willing to build things. And they also have been through some major tumultuousness in their own romantic life as well. They're also lacking in insight. So it's not overall a good month to be meeting new people. Okay, so I hope the reading is helpful. Take care of yourself, Capricorns. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.